Scientists are warning of dramatic changes at one of the biggest glaciers in Antarctica in the next five to ten years. The Antarctic ice sheet covers 98% of the continent and contains more than half of the world's fresh water. They are studying it every day with satellites. From a NASA airborne mission called Operation Ice Bridge. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent by landmass and contains the majority of the Antarctic region. This suggests that despite being a continent without a single country, Antarctica is capable of engulfing both Oceania and Europe. Antarctica is critical to global climate systems. It is a component of the Earth's heat balance. The heat balance, also known as the energy balance, is the ratio of solar heat received by the Earth's atmosphere to heat reflected back into space. Antarctica also has an important role in your well-being. Because Antarctica has a lot of ice, which is more reflective than land or water, it deflects a lot of solar radiation away from the Earth's surface. This implies that the loss of ice on the continent foreshadows global disaster. According to scientists, when the ice surface area declines, the globe absorbs more solar radiation, resulting in an unbalanced heat balance linked to global warming and climate change. Nonetheless, this is where things become interesting. As you may know, Antarctica is dominated by the Antarctic Ice Sheet, the world's largest single sheet of ice. Despite the harsh conditions, scientists are conducting study in Antarctica, and many of their findings are frightening. Recent satellite photographs and a NASA investigation revealed a startling discovery. What exactly is this finding, and how does it affect our world? Stay with us until the very end to learn everything there is to know about it. There is a continent beneath the Antarctic ice sheet that is covered by rivers and lakes, the largest of which is the size of Lake Erie. During a typical year, the ice sheet melts and refreezes, causing lakes and rivers to fill and drain swiftly from the meltwater. This process makes it simpler for Antarctica's frozen surface to slide about and rise and fall by up to 6 metres in some spots. According to a new study led by NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, a mantle plume may exist beneath the area known as Marie Birdland. The presence of this geothermal heat source may explain some of the melting that occurs beneath the sheet and why it is currently unstable. It could also help explain why the ice sheet disintegrated so quickly in previous instances of climate change. The paper titled Influence of West Antarctica Mantle Plume on Ice Sheet Basal Conditions was published recently in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Solid Earth. Helene Sarusi of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory headed the research team, which included researchers from Washington University's Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences and the Alfred Wegener Institute, Helmholtz Center for Polar and Marine Research in Germany. The movement of Antarctica's ice sheet over time has always piqued the interest of Earth scientists. Scientists can predict where and how much water is melting at the base by observing the pace at which the ice sheet rises and falls. These observations prompted scientists to speculate about the presence of heat sources beneath Antarctica's icy surface. Wesley E. Le Mazurier, a scientist at the University of Colorado, Denver, proposed the existence of a mantle plume beneath Marie Birdland 30 years ago. According to his research, this could be an explanation for the regional volcanic activity and a topographic dome shape. However, it was only lately that the seismic imaging investigations provided confirmation for this mantle plume. Direct measurements of the region beneath Marie Birdland, however, are currently not possible. As a result, Sarusi and Eric Ivans of JPL relied on the Ice Sheet System Model ISSM, to validate the plume's existence. This model, developed by scientists at JPL and the University of California, Irvine, is essentially a numerical representation of the physics of the ice sheet. Sarusi and her team used observations of variations in altitude of the ice sheet made over many years to confirm that the model was accurate. NASA's Ice Clouds and Land Elevation Satellite, ICESAT, and its airborne Operation Ice Bridge mission carried out these measurements. For years, these missions have been surveying the Antarctic ice sheet, resulting in the compilation of extremely accurate three-dimensional elevation maps. 
Sarusi also expanded the ISSM to incorporate natural heat sources and heat transport mechanisms such as freezing, melting, liquid water, friction and others. This combined data set strong constraints on the acceptable melt rates in Antarctica, allowing the team to perform dozens of simulations and investigate a wide variety of possible mantle plume sites. They discovered that the heat flow induced by the mantle plume did not surpass 150 milliwatts per square metre. In instance, locations with little volcanic activity normally have a feed flux of 40 to 60 milliwatts, but geothermal hotspots, such as the one under the Yellowstone National Park, have an average of roughly 200 milliwatts per square metre. The melt rate was too high compared to the space-based data in simulations that exceeded 150 milliwatts per square metre, except for one spot, which was an area inland of the Ross Sea known to experience high water flows. To match the reported melt rates, this region required a heat flow of at least 150 to 180 milliwatts per square metre. Seismic imaging in this area has also revealed that warmth could reach the ice sheet via a fracture in the Earth's mantle. This is also consistent with the existence of a mantle plume, which is assumed to be thin streams of hot magma rising through the Earth's mantle and spreading out beneath the crust. This viscous lava then expands beneath the crust causing it to protrude higher. This process distributes heat into the ice sheet where ice sits on top of the plume, causing major melting and runoff. Finally, Sarusi and her colleagues present persuasive evidence for a surface plume beneath West Antarctica's ice sheet, based on a combination of surface and seismic data. They also believe that this mantle plume formed 50 to 110 million years ago, long before the West Antarctic ice sheet existed. When the last ice age ended, approximately 11,000 years ago, the ice sheet endured a period of rapid, continuous ice loss. Warm water was pushed closer to the ice sheet when global weather patterns and rising sea levels began to alter. According to Sarusi and Ivan's research, the mantle plume may be supporting this type of fast loss today, just as it did during the last commencement of an interglacial period. Understanding the origins of ice sheet loss beneath West Antarctica is critical for determining the rate at which ice may be lost there and hence projecting the implications of climate change. Given that the Earth is once again experiencing global temperature changes, this time caused by human activity, it is critical to develop reliable climate models that will tell us how quickly polar ice will melt and sea levels will rise. It also contributes to our understanding of how our planet's history and climatic fluctuations are linked and how these have influenced its geological evolution. One of NASA's most recent discoveries is that seismic imaging has indicated that there may be a rift or split in the Earth's crust. Contrary to popular belief, relatively few of the Earth's 1,500 potentially active volcanoes possess bubbling lava pools. These lava lakes are so rare that only seven were known to exist before Wednesday. A team of scientists has discovered the planet's eighth lava lake on a remote sub-Antarctic island after 30 years of exploration. Mount Michael, an active volcano on Saunders Island in the South Sandwich Islands, was verified to have a lake by high-definition satellite pictures. This week, scientists from the British Antarctic Survey and University College London published their findings in the journal Volcanology and Geothermal Research. We are delighted to have discovered such a remarkable geological feature in the British Overseas Territory, research co-author Alex Burton-Johnson stated in a press release. Identifying the lava lake has improved our understanding of the volcanic activity and hazard on this remote island and tells us more about these rare features. Satellite photographs of Mount Michael in the 1990s revealed what appeared to be a lava lake, but the resolution was insufficient to prove its presence. Mount Michael's distant position also made photographing the volcano challenging. Mount Michael is a volcano on a remote island in the Southern Ocean. It is extremely difficult to access, and without high-resolution satellite imagery, it would have been very challenging to learn more about this amazing geological feature, stated lead author Danielle Gray in a press release. Mount Michael's lava lake measures 90 to 215 metres in diameter, which is larger than two football fields. 
The temperature of the molten lava in the lake is estimated to be between 989 and 1,279 degrees Celsius, 1,812 to 2,344 degrees Fahrenheit. Other known lava lakes include Niragongo Volcano in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Erta Ale Volcano in Ethiopia, Mount Erebus in Antarctica, Mount Yasa in Vanuatu, Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii, Ambram Island in Vanuatu, and Messiah Volcano in Nicaragua. Persistent lava lakes are a rather uncommon volcanic phenomenon. Only a few lava lakes have ever been confirmed globally, and even the most persistent of these vanish after 10 to 100 years. Ponded lava is caused by and only lasts for the duration of an eruptive episode in lava pools, which are associated with molten lava flowing outside of the crater. Lava lakes, on the other hand, survive beyond a single eruptive activity and are not related with magma outpourings. Instead, the evacuated stuff is gaseous and the energy is mostly thermal. Lava lakes are distinguished by persistently high temperature anomalies within the volcanic crater, which are created by an exposed body of circulating magma fed by a reservoir beneath. The activity of a lava lake can range from minutes to decades, Lake levels can fluctuate or entirely drain, and the surface can be crusted or molten with explosive lava fountains. Surfaces have fractures that expose molten lava, as well as broader regions of crust that are cooled by radiation, heat loss and rainfall. Because volatiles exit freely through the lake, volcanoes with persistent lava lakes are less explosive than those without. As a result, Rather than magma outpourings, emissions consist primarily of gas and thermal energy. Despite this, their harmful gas emissions necessitate regular monitoring. Let us know what you think in the comments down below.